Hi, this is Ms. Clemmy, and welcome to the video on bone physiology. Now, let's break that down for a second. Physiology. Function. So what does a bone do? Well, I could probably ask somebody much younger uh, what a bone does, and they'd say, well, it supports and it protects and helps us move. So looking at a bone from the microscopic structure is pretty easy to determine the physiology. However, what we're most concerned with is how does that macroscopic physiology trickle down to the microscopic. So we're actually going to look at the physiology, the function of microscopic bone. How does it work? And so if you keep the analogy of a, of a tree in the cross section, like here in this redwood, you can see these concentric circles. Um, and uh, that same feature is going to be seen in compact bone. So we're actually going to take a look at the compact bone. That's the major part of bone that makes it very, very tough um, and, and hard, but not hard enough that it's brittle. So there's a little bit of give to it based on the microscopic structure. And so we're not going to be concerned with the, the porous spongy bone. We're going to look at here in that compact bone. If we zoom in, you can see that indeed it does look like a tree. You can see the concentric circles get smaller and smaller. Now, unlike a tree, which only has one of those in compact bone, there's many, many, many of these concentric circles. So let's begin by looking at those circles. I'm going to draw here my concentric circle. And in bone, we give that a name. That's like a whole little neighborhood, if you will. It's called an osteon. And in that osteon, there are concentric layers. But remember, keep in mind that there's only, or not only, there's many, many, many osteons in compact bone, unlike a tree. But anyways, back to those layers. Uh, so I'm going to shade in those different layers as such. And those layers are called lamellae. Uh, but what's important is the color that I fill them in with, this yellow color. So we have one lamellae from here to here. There's two more lamellae. But all of this stuff here that fills up those layers, it's called the matrix. Now, the matrix is what makes bone bone. The matrix is just a conglomerate of different organic and inorganic substances, like calcium and phosphorus, that make bone what it is. And so it's really important that the matrix stay just the right uh, percentage of all of these different substances. So that's what we call in these odd-shaped cells. And they're called osteocytes. Site, meaning the root word for cell, and osteo, bone. These are the components um, that are inside the lamellae that can constantly monitor the components and the makeup of the matrix. And I've only drawn three in this picture, but you can rest assured there are many, many, many osteocytes throughout this osteon. Now, what's really crucial is that you see they have these little appendages. And, you know, this appendage here connects with the next osteocyte. You can imagine there would be another appendage for another osteocyte, etc. I want to draw one. Um, you get the gist. Those little appendages are critical because they allow nutrients to be passed from osteocyte to osteocyte and eventually as a connection to a major artery or blood vessel. Let me show you how that works. So those appendages sit in these little carved out passage or tunnels called canaliculi, like a canal perhaps. And so they lay in these little um, beds safe within the matrix, and that allows those appendages to grow and connect with one another so that um, they can act as little passageways and tunnels. And here's why. In the very middle of the osteon, that white part actually is called the Hamburgian Canal, and it houses two blood vessels, an artery and a vein. And so if you're an osteocyte, you want to get good things from the artery, like oxygen and nutrients. And you want to be able to deposit out of your waste, such as CO2 and urea, just like any other cell in the body, to the vein to get flushed out of your body. And so if it weren't for those appendages and canaliculi, we wouldn't be able to get those nutrients and things back and forth to the osteocytes. 
diffusion, which is what they would have to rely on, just wouldn't cut it, especially for those osteocytes in farther out lamellae. So that's a look at the ASEAN system. And uh, here's actually the same thing. Um, someone just had to make a cake, uh, but it, it still has got everything. It's pretty cool. So the Herbergian Canal has the artery and the vein right here. And we have the green osteocytes with the canaliculi in purple. And the white is the matrix. Here's an actual microscopic picture of the uh, the um, you can see the virgin canals here and here, but there's just lots and lots of osteons and compact bone. They just butt up right, in, right next to each other. And finally, one last picture of an osteon and compact bone. Um, what I just showed you is kind of like the top layer here, but you'll notice it really does go deep, deep, deep into the bone and pretty much runs the length of these bones. So what we just looked at was bone tissue or osseous tissue and how it's maintained. How the osteocytes regulate the components of their monitor the components of the matrix. But we're not quite finished. Osteocytes just monitor the matrix. So what actually happens if something needs to be adjusted within that matrix? Well, we have to call in two other bone cells, osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Now my favorite are blasts. Sorry, the class, a C, these are bone killers. So they look like little Pac-Man, they're here just eating away at the matrix. Here's why you would potentially need osteoclasts to do their job. Say, for example, your blood calcium, or right, let's just start here. So there's lots of calcium stored in your bone. And your blood calcium gets too low. Well, then the osteocytes will tell those class, hey, you need to start eating up and destroying some bone so that that calcium gets released, and it goes into the bloodstream. On the other hand, osteoblasts are the bone builders. Now, the reverse is true. So say that there's lots of calcium in the blood, too much so that we want to reserve or put some in, into storage, those blasts will take that calcium and start to use it to build more of the matrix, etc. And there's some other reasons why you need osteoblasts in class, um, especially blasts, for example, um, if you experience any fractures in your bone. And what we're going to talk about next is ossification. How babies and newborns take their cartilage skeleton and convert it into bone. So they need osteoblasts for that. Let's just really briefly take a look at ossification. So we have all these bones, specifically those long appendage bones. They're purely made of cartilage. So what happens is um, osteoblasts are laying down like an outer sheath of bone, compact bone. And some of them migrate to the middle and start laying down some bone cells there. Then, once we get blood vessels coming into the area, we can start to improve um, the speed at which those blasts are building bone. And um, then once we get a really good inner core, we can start to hollow it out. So the clasts come in and hollow it out for the bone marrow and opening space here. There will be some secondary regions of ossification in the ends of the bone. The ends of the, the bone are called the epiphyses. Epiphyses plural, epiphysis singular. And now what's super interesting is that if you have bone here and you have bone here, they're both kind of growing towards each other, but you have a little thin line of cartilage in between. Now as long as that cartilage stays there, your bones will continue to grow. And so if you, you get your cartilage moving pretty fast and then your bones to catch up to them, to ossify them completely, you'll end up being pretty tall. If your cartilage doesn't move so fast and your bones catch up with it and ossify it and turn it into a calcified matrix, then you won't be so tall. So that's a really brief look at how bones maintain their osseous compact structure. And I hope that that was helpful.